Hello everybody and welcome back to A New Way to Museum. I'm Reese Barrick and I'm the director of the museum. And today I want to talk a little bit about antlers and horns because they're on browsers and grazers all over the world. And they're sort of featured in uh, Kansas because we have a state song that is, Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about just what are antlers and what are horns and how do they relate to each other. So first off, I'd like to start out talking a little bit about antlers because most everybody recognizes antlers. Antlers belong on the cervid family. Cervid family is the deer family. And the deer family includes white tail, uh, black tail deer, but also includes elk and moose and uh, caribou, reindeer, and so all sorts of things that have antlers. And what are antlers? Antlers are kind of cool. Antlers are actually made out of bone. And they're sort of interesting because they're not actually fully attached to the skull. So um, antlers in cervids are only found on males with the exception of caribou. So guys over here. And caribou, the females will have horns. They're usually smaller than the males, um, a little more for defensive purposes. But for all other cervids, only the males have antlers. Um, so antlers grow from the start on the skull. There's a little pedestal or button that is attached and fused to the skull. And from there is where the antlers grow. And the antlers grow with, in the spring, with velvet. And velvet grows up around and inside the velvet you get really spongy bone that grows up really rapidly and comes to a number of different points depending on the age and size of the, uh, the deer. And what's interesting then is once they get fully grown, the deer rub off the velvet and in that process they sort of shine up the bone and just as they're doing that, the exterior of the bone becomes compact, really dense bone, and it gets shined up really nicely as they're rubbing off the velvet, and that's really handy for attracting mates. So a large rack is on a male, and um, very shiny bone is very good for attracting um, females or fighting other males uh, for breeding rights. But what happens is then, as you get into the fall and winter, they really don't need a large rack anymore. It draws a, a attention to them. And so what happens is they start to lose uh, calcium right around the pedestal. And this guy's still got his, his horns on, but you can see it starts to get thinner right around here as they resorb calcium. And as they resorb calcium, they start losing the base right around the pedestal and eventually then the whole rack falls off. And you can see sort of where the pedestal it attached to the rack and they fall off and they have to grow every year a whole new set of antlers. So antlers are bone and they fall off seasonally once every year. Um, again, on cervids or the deer family. Now horns on the other hand are part of the bovid family. What are bovids? Bovids are cattle and buffalo and bison um, and goats and sheep um, and those sorts of animals. And horns are quite a bit different. Um, horns are bone that end up with a keratin sheath around them. So you can see whether it's a sheep um, you can see that the bone is actually attached to the skull and continues growing throughout its life. So horns never stop growing throughout an animal's life. They come in a variety of shapes. You can see a ram shape. This is a cape buffalo, so which comes in a different uh, buffalo shape. And we have a bison over here, which is much quite a bit smaller horns than you get off of the buffalo. So 
horns are, have, are bone, fused to the skull. They don't fall off ever. And the keratin, which is the sheath around it, stays on the horn throughout its whole life. And the only time you find uh, a horn without the keratin sheath on it is after it's been dead for a long time and it begins to essentially uh, fall apart, rot away, in which case then you just get the horn core left. Um, so horn core with a keratin sheath, bovids. Um, so that's really the big difference between horns and antlers. And they really fall very distinctly between different families of animals. Now in the song, we talk about antelopes playing. And in Kansas, what that means is that we're talking about pronghorns. All right? Now, the question is, is a pronghorn really an antelope? Antelope actually belong to the bovid family. So they have horns with a carrot and sheath that don't fall off. The other thing that's really important actually about um, horns, they don't have any branching. They're all just single point horns. They don't, um, so whether they're big curvy shapes or fairly straight, they all um, have a single point. Pronghorns here are interesting because they have prongs, so they do have more than one point. Also, the most fascinating thing is they actually shed their sheath every year. The bone is fused to the skull, so the bone is there for its entire life. But the sheath falls off every year and regrows the keratin sheath annually. So what does that make them? They've got more than one point, like an antler, but they're made out of bone with a keratin sheath, like the bovids, but they shed the keratin annually. So pronghorn are not antelopes. They do not belong to the bovid family. They belong in a family all their own, Antilocapernae, which is kind of cool. So that means that really you can't watch the deer and the antelope play in the United States because we don't actually have any antelope. All of the antelope are in Africa and Asia. But what about the buffalo? Well, interestingly enough, this is a Cape buffalo from South Africa. It's an actual buffalo. There are also water buffalo that are from India and Southeast Asia. And they have very large horns also, but they belong to separate uh, genera. They have each their own genus. The Cape buffalo is Sincerus, and it's actually uh, a buffalo that's never really been domesticated. Water buffalo, on the other hand, belong to a genus called Bubalus, which is really kind of cool. And they've been domesticated, and they're used all over the world. But what about our buffalo in the United States? Well, it's not a buffalo. It's a bison. As a matter of fact, the genus and species is bison. It's a bison bison. Um, so why do we call them buffalo? Interestingly enough, uh, fur traders very early on, French fur traders that were in Canada and through the US, they saw the bison and they would hunt them for food and they used the name uh, boeuf which is French for beef, which is kind of what they are. So they were, they were used as beef for food for the, for the fur traders, and boeuf became easily to say transformed into buffalo, buffalo. So we started calling bison buffalo, even though they're not related at all to actual buffalo from Africa or Asia. Um, and they really don't look a whole lot the same. We do have uh, some, some bison heads over here. And 
What's really fascinating is their bison are actually more closely related to cows or cattle than they are to actual buffalo, which means cattle are more related to buffalo or to bison than they are to buffalo, which is odd because if you really look at them, you look at a, a water buffalo and a longhorn cow or any sort of large cattle, they look very similar. They look like they ought to belong together, but they don't. They can't interbreed. Buffalo and cattle cannot interbreed at all, even though they look very similar. Bison and cattle do reproduce, and that's how we get our beefalo. Um, so, fascinatingly enough, um, if you really want to s live in a place where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play, it's not going to be in the United States. There's very few places in the world where you find buffalo and deer and antelopes. Um, Africa has buffalo and antelopes. The only deer species is in a different part of Africa. It's actually northern India where you can find water buffalo, a number of different deer species, and an antelope species that all live in the same area. So if you really want to live in a place where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play, move to India. On the other hand, if you live in Kansas, we might have to change our song up a little bit. And it might have to be more along the lines of, oh, give me a home where the bison will roam and the deer and the pronghorn do play. So anyway, that's just the, the fun parts of understanding antlers, horns, and the types of animals that they're on and how they do relate to the animals we have in Kansas, in the United States, and around the world. So thank you again for joining us for a new way to museum, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks for joining us in a new way to museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.